Christianize me if you may, but don't try to Europeanize me. And when we saw him, we started screaming, JJ, JJ. Hello Explorers, yes, it's Siru from OES Africa and you are welcome back to my channel. Today we continue our series on the untold truth about Africa, the past three. In previous episodes, we looked at the behind the scenes of the life, achievement and governance of Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and his impacts on the continent as a whole. If you've not seen that already, I will include a link at the end of this video and in the description box below so you can check it out. In today's video, however, we take a look into the second most influential person in Ghana's history and how he affected change in the formation of today's Ghana. In June 1979, Ghana was at a crossroad. Another military coup was at hand. A young Air Force pilot who a few weeks before had been court-martialed and was awaiting execution, was broken out of jail by his colleagues to lead what would be later known as the June 4th Revolution. Little was known of this man who would later be instrumental in changing the future of Ghana forever. His name, Jerry Rawlings. Jerry Rawlings was born in Accra, Ghana, on the 22nd of June, 1947, to his mother, Victoria Abokchui, and his Scottish father, James Ramsey. He attended Ghana's prestigious Achimota School, an elite school at the time. Achimota was founded on the principle of providing African students with the British model of a public education. The school boasts of an impressive alumni with Ghana's first president, Kwame Nkrumah, Gambia's Sadawada Jawara, and Zimbabwe's president, Robert Mugabe, all being former students at different times in the school's history. I must say that it probably was one of the finest times of my life. You know, it's modern school. It's a place to be proud of. I noticed him, yes, because he was very visible and bullied us even though we were in the same class. Not in a very bad way, but you know, bullying is bullying. And um, so uh, you can't help but notice him. But I never thought that we will come this far. By collective effort that the nation's problems can be solved. Before his fame as a revolutionary, Jerry Rawlings was unknown to most of Ghana. In March 1968, he began his training as a pilot officer. I wanted to fly from the age of six. Honest. I was standing next to my mother, you know, in a compound house, when the young man also in the house, you know, asked me what I'd like to be when I grew, grew up. And I said, I'd like to be a pilot. And... Bang! My mother slapped me on the back. Oh, yes, yes. You'll be a doctor. You'll be a scientist. I mean, the whole house, the compound became quiet, shocked at what had just happened. I never gave up my dream. He graduated in January 1969 and was commissioned a pilot officer. And because of his exceptional skill, he won the coveted Speed Bird Trophy. The Speed Bird Trophy went to Lieutenant J.J. Rawlings for being the best Air Force cadet of the flying training school. I won the Speed Bird Trophy. In those days, we didn't have, have televisions. You know, we had what they called the newsreels in movie houses. But my mother was not interested. He earned the rank of Flight Lieutenant in April of 1978. 
The early years of independence in Ghana were filled with great hope for the future, with the country's first president, Kwame Nkrumah's leadership, set to catapult Ghana into a new era. But over the years, Nkrumah's regime became less accommodating and declared the nation a one-party state. While on a state visit to Vietnam and China in 1966, Nkrumah was deposed from power in a coup. I was at school. So how did the people around him, how did they conduct or misconduct themselves in such a way as to bring so much hatred to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah? What followed was a period of military coups failed civilian governments that left the people dissatisfied. Widespread corruption made life difficult for the people of Ghana. This led to growing anger and resentment. Ghana then, everything was monopolized. I remember our basic food like beans and gari was only sold. I remember at that time Malata was sold by one woman. One. Believe you me, one person was selling that, only one. There was no soap, just bath and soap there was none, toothpaste there was none, nothing, no food. And we got to know that Ghana was almost just getting to a ground. But the point is that we have set the example, we have shown that we're capable of doing it. Jerry Rowlings came into the public eye when on the 28th of May 1979, Rawlings, together with six other soldiers, were arrested by the militia for an attempted coup d'etat on the government of General Fred Akufo. General Kwesi Akufo was the chief of defense staff of the Ghana Armed Forces and Ghana's head of state from 1978 to 1979. Rawlings appeared before a general court-martial charged with leading a squad of soldiers on the 15th of May, 1979. I keep describing it as turning on the gas in a kitchen. That's how volatile it was. From a distance, all you needed to do was to ignite a match and throw it inside. And that's what I could have done in 79, 15th May. I was praying for the best. I also knew exactly what was going on in the country and knew that he had taken the flag for all of us. Therefore, if he had to die for his conviction, I knew he would prefer to do that. He was found guilty and awaiting execution. The trial was a public one that was meant to deter any future coups and was broadcast for all of Ghana to see and hear. They were, you know, they were trading some things amongst themselves, the prosecution and the lawyers and whatnot, and severally and whatnot, those terms they use. So I got up and grabbed the microphone, you know, said, I don't understand these terms and all that's going on, neither do my boys. And I'm just here, and I'm taking responsibility for everything that's happened, and to leave my men alone. But I wanted to make sure that they, they hear what I have to say first. He made an unforgettable speech in court and said, I am not an expert in economics, and I am not an expert in law, but I am an expert in working on an empty stomach, wondering when and where the next meal will come from. I know what it feels like going to bed with a headache for want of food in the stomach. He was an embodiment of the uh, reaction, the disappointment, the great disappointment of the people of Ghana. Instead, the name Rawlings became the symbol of hope and deliverance for the people of Ghana. On the 4th of June of that same year, a mutiny by officers in support of his cause broke him out of jail, sparking the revolution. So what would that mean? Yao Graham was in university then 
and remembers the mood of the time. It was in the middle of this split national mood that Jerry Rawlings was arrested and reported as somebody who was planning to clean up the mess by overthrowing these people. Now it's important to, to, to understand this because he didn't say anything. The prosecution said this was what he was about. But such was the mood that people identified that actually this guy is saying exactly the way we are feeling. So he became a hero on account of the honesty of the prosecution. 1979, I was almost uh, 10 years. Uh, if I recollect, that June 4th, when we heard that something had happened, I think it was on the news. That's the first time you know that something is going on. They start playing uh, Ghana National Anthem. So we knew that another person had taken control, charge of the country. But who, they were not really sure. Some people went and spied and realized that when he alighted from the helicopter, the men picked him up. And when we saw him, we started screaming, JJ, JJ. And my dad would shake his head and say, wow, <laughs> we are in trouble and our kids are hailing this man. When you consider, you know, the difficulties, the, the shock effect that June 4th should have had on us, should have woken us up. And I do remember, to be quite honest, in those volatile, violent, difficult days when people were calling for let the blood flow, etc. There were some intellectuals and some diplomats who, I guess, have a better knowledge of history who were asking me to, to that I was exercising too much control. I was restraining it too much. Jerry Rawlings and his soldiers formed the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, AFRC. I didn't expect to be here. Later, the AFRC carried out what Rawlings described as a house cleaning exercise. This was basically the identifying of leaders that were deemed corrupt. The leaders were either sentenced to prison for their crimes or, in some cases, executed by the AFRC. Three months later, on 24th September 1979, the AFRC allowed Hila Liman to head Ghana and a People's National Party, PNP. However, Hila Liman's presidency was short-lived. On 31st December 1981, after only two years as president, Liman's administration was cut short when Rawlings ousted him in yet another coup, claiming that his government was taking Ghana down a road of economic ruin. But it was his second coming, as we say, call it here, the 1981 coup d'etat, that then made him the figure that he is today, that was when people encountered him directly or indirectly. It was, it was a fairly difficult period. The PNDC is a government that is or should be run by the people. I ended up in office, not because I wanted to be chairman, to be head of state, but it was just my passion to see justice done, my love of freedom. That's what puts me always in this position, or put me in this position. Rowling's government was called the Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC. PNDC was made up of both civilians and soldiers. The government set about to restore the nation's pride and infrastructure through hard work, determination, and mass inclusion. The politics of the country was being driven very much by ordinary people, by young people, particularly students. And a lot of the people who fanned out across the country to build the base for the PNDC. Students took months, university students took months from school to go and lift cocoa for export. The symbolism of that was very important. I belong to the generation that actually had to stop schooling and we had to go out working to get 
cocoa from the farms to the ports to be exported in Netherlands. It brought us awareness. If earlier on we thought there was a thin divide between the people and government, now that alone told us that we are the government and it's the people who make up the government and that it is time for us to stand up for our own rights. That is what Jerry Lawrence represents for most of the people of my generation. A hands-on leader, Rollins ensured the rebuilding of Ghana would be shared by all. Soldier and civilian took part with no task too big or too small. His passion is um, the underdog not being maltreated or mistreated. And looking at a situation where if we have, let's say, six million Ghanaians, he wants to bring all six million Ghanaians to a certain level of livelihood. I know him to be a passionate man. He wants things done uh, immediately. I always say Kwame Nkrumah always want things done yesterday. And Rawlings wanted things done immediately, quick, quick. Uh, they have that one in common. There it is, explorers. Trust you enjoyed watching this and you learned a thing or two. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe and turn on post notification to be notified when I upload the next video. And until next time, 